Hi, this is Stephen from Mona Disown. Today I am reviewing the new Asus Zephyrus G15, that's the GA502 IV, which has been updated with the new Ryzen 7 4800HS processor, which is an 8 core, 35 watt part, and an RTX 2060 Max Q, which is a 65 watt part. The 4800HS has the same base and boost clocks as the 45 watt 4800H, that's 2.9 GHz to 4.2 GHz but that 10 watt less does impact performance, as you will see shortly. My unit cost me $1,399 plus tax, and I also bought the Tough A15 for that review. Now only the big channels are getting these new laptops for free, so any support you can give me by subscribing is much appreciated. I bought the 240Hz 3ms model because so far all of the AMD laptops have been given screens with a low color gamut, low brightness, and low response times. And indeed, here is my ghosting test with the G15 on the left and my Omen 15T on the right. The Omen has a 144Hz panel and I think the G15 just has it beat. Now compare the test with the G15 against the Tough A15 and there is simply no comparison. This is definitely the screen to get. And with it having adaptive sync in the range of 48Hz to 240Hz and a low 3ms response time, I saw no tearing at all. As a gaming panel, it is up there with the best. Even for content creation, the panel was sharp and the colors were crisp and vibrant. So the screen on the G15 is greatly improved. It's uh, showing here alongside the Omen 15T. Now we're looking at 94% of sRGB on the uh, 240 Hertz uh, uh, display here on the G15 and a brightness of 351 nits at 100%. And that's compared to 95% sRGB here on the Omen 15T and a slightly dimmer display at 330 nits. Um, contrast ratio, 890 to 1 on the Omen, and 850 on the G15. And if we reduce the brightness, uh, say at 50%, the G15 remains brighter, it's 137 nits versus 108 nits on the Omen. So a definite improvement. So the panel has thin bezels all the way around, and consequently, there's no webcam here up at the top. And the panel stiffness, there's a, fair, there's a bit of flex there and a bit of creaking sound here from the top right hand corner. And as for the backlight bleed, you know, it, the G15 screen is very good. So the bottom cover is plastic. Speaker grills here. Get inside using uh, Phillips head screws. So it's nice and easy to get in. Um, but there's the kicker look. Air intakes blocked off where the fans are crazy really it really does limit uh, the, the cooling performance idea I suppose bring air in through here and across the heat pipes and these components here but um, well that being said you do have some quite big uh, heat sinks here at the back and um, of course you've got the, uh, the GPU uh, being here so the RTX 2060 Max Q 65 watt and the 4800 HS Ryzen 7 CPU there now it does come with one stick of RAM replaceable 16 gigab gigabytes altogether 8 gigabytes are soldered on intel wi-fi 6 ax200 wi-fi card you can replace that 76 watt hour battery here and at uh, you know to the 240 hertz panel um i got about five hours 50 minutes of run time there so that's what i got there um and that's uh, of course you've got the speakers here of course you've got the uh, m.2 drive here with a second one here a uh, PCI Express drive there, so you can have two slots. So that'll about 35 decibels of the fan noise, and it says at 2700 RPM. And then the load, around about 50 decibels. So let's have a look at the chassis temperatures here on the G15. And actually, they're not too bad to be honest, you know, um, about 35 degrees Celsius or so there. And you can see a little bit where cooler is boarded through the keyboard not a lot but a little bit is and this is a, you know the air vent here at the top let's have a quick look underneath now normally you'd like to see some cool air there being brought in but of course the air intakes of the fans are blocked off but that being said the chassis itself is pretty cool so software has the my asus where you can easily download all the latest drivers i like that and also you have the options for the battery health charging, have it charge all the way up to 
or like I've got it here, you know, balance mode where it only charges up to 80%. But you can even, even uh, maximize the lifespan of your battery by charging it only up to 60%. Now, also, you've got the Armory Crate software. And, of course, the front page shows you, you know, the fan speeds, CPU frequency, that type of thing, and also uh, for the GPU. And you've got the various power modes here as well. You have know, a manual here where you can actually, like I have applied, the fan speed for various temperatures for both the CPU and the GPU. And you can also, you know, increase the clock of the core and the memory on the GPU. And of course, then you can also just choose turbo, performance, silent, or even just use the Windows power settings. Now, there's no, in the Aura Sync, it's only white backlight, so there's no changing any colors available here. The CPU frequency will jump up and down quite a bit. Now, this is just watching a YouTube video on turbo mode, so it'll fluctuate between 1400 to 4300 megahertz, up and down quite a lot. So with the fan air intakes being blocked off and likely voiding your warranty if you remove them, I not only tested the various power profiles, but also using a cooling pad. And in gaming, I did try also lowering the clock of the RTX 2060 Max-Q. So, in Cinebench R20, I showed a Zephyr's G15 in blue at the top. Performance mode scored 3,237 points and ran at 85 degrees. And with the turbo mode, the higher fan speed reduced the temperature to 73 degrees and 3,690 points. Using a cooling pad did shave off 3 degrees and bumped up the score to 3,763 points. As you can see, this is quite far off the score of the 4800H in the tough A15 and is more in line with the i9-9880H. In my longer running handbraking code, I showed the time in seconds, so lower the time, the better. Again, I have the G15 in blue at the top, and we see much the same as before, the 4800H being the fastest. And as for the temperatures, I saw 85 degrees in performance mode and 74 degrees in turbo mode. Using a cooling pad, made it a bit quicker and did shave off 5 degrees. Okay, so far so good, but it is in gaming where things tend to go pear-shaped here. First, I'll show you the effect of the power settings as I run Far Cry 5. Here is a manual mode where I set the fans basically to 100%, the GPU overclocked, and have the Windows power setting to game turbo mode. The CPU is at 95 degrees and 35 watts. The GPU at about 1545 MHz and 76 degrees with a frame rate of about 91 FPS. Now I switch it to turbo mode and the regular Windows high performance setting. The GPU drops to 1485 MHz, 74 degrees, and the CPU main, remains at about 95 degrees Celsius and 35 watts. And the frame rate also remains unchanged. In both cases, the CPU is boosting to about 3,900 megahertz. Switching to the performance mode, the CPU does drop to 26 watts and 91 degrees and a 3,500 megahertz boost clock. The GPU temperature remains unchanged, but it does downclock slightly to 1,440 megahertz. If you're hoping that using a silent profile is your saviour, then you know, think again, because even though the CPU drops to 20 watts, the frame rate goes through the floor and the CPU temperature remains unchanged. Using the Windows Power Profile of Balanced, the CPU is now at 27 watts, holding about 3600 MHz, and finally drops below the 90 degree mark with negligible effect on frame rate. This was a stationary test, so let's run the inbuilt benchmark with Turbo Mode at the top and the Windows Power Saver at the bottom. Now you don't lose much frame rate with the power saver, and it seems quite steady at 90 degrees. Now what about if I use a cooling pad? Well, here is auto settings with the GPU overclocked and max fan with uh, five fans on my cooling pad, blowing air into whatever vents are open. This certainly doesn't look like the solution. It just cannot cool 36 watts on the CPU and about 65 watts on the RTX 2060. Here's the effect of uh, the different power modes on frame rates, and it seems to me that Power Saver is the way to go. And compared to the 1660 Ti in the ASUS Tough A15, we don't see a huge difference. Slight advantage to the cooler running Tough A15, perhaps. This time, let's see the effect of downclocking the GPU using MSI Afterburner Voltage Curve Editor. Here's Battlefield 5, DX11 using Ultra Settings. Performance mode on the top, and using the same power profile, but with the GPU set at 1302 megahertz at the bottom. 
Now this only saves you one degree on the CPU and the reduction in frame rate is not worth it. It really is crazy that ASUS blocked off those air intakes and makes you jump through hoops to fix their bad engineering. Now I show power saver on top and turbo with a cooling pad at the bottom. Different maps, so don't focus too much on the frame rate. But the takeaway here is that the power saver gives a good gaming experience and is a good 3 degrees cooler than using the notebook cooler. Here is the frame rate comparison with the different power modes. And again, I think using power saver is a good compromise between thermals and frame rate. Even running cooler than if you were to downclock the GPU and giving a better frame rate. Now compared to the ASUS Tough A15 with the 1660Ti, again, you know, they were neck and neck. And that's an 80 watt GPU, so you know I would think having that in this system would make it run even hotter. Here is Overwatch using Epic settings using turbo mode. At the top though, we use the cooling pad, which does shave off a few degrees, but you will still still see spikes even to 100 degrees. This definitely isn't the solution. Now we have the performance mode at the top and power saver mode at the bottom. When the CPU drops to about 24 watts in power saving mode, we do drop to about 88 degrees. Not much difference to the 90 degrees with performance mode. And the effect on frame rate when you switch power modes is negligible really. And most importantly, minimums are still over 100 FPS. Interestingly, the Tough A15 did better here. Perhaps it was a range of maps being played, but either way, the frame rates were good. In my next video, I will show gaming performance across several games at various quality settings. So the lid is brushed aluminum in its usual two pattern design here. And the ROG emblem here doesn't light up, but it is reflective. Now it does show a few fingerprints, but it's quite easy to keep clean. So the keyboard deck is made out of plastic, you know, but that's not too bad. It doesn't really seem to show, show that marks too badly. The one thing to bear in mind, the screws around the edges here are slightly smaller than the screws elsewhere. And if I inadvertently put one of the slightly larger screws and screwed it in, and it did bubble here. Now, if it was an aluminium deck, that wouldn't have uh, happened. So just bear that in mind. The uh, trackpad, it's posted a little bit on the small side, integrated buttons, plastic, smooth, precision drivers, but I found it worked okay. The key bell keyboard itself, I thought the keys were a little bit on the small side, particularly, you know, like the escape key here, delete key, and the arrow keys here are particularly small. Uh, of course, up and down arrows, you've got uh, the key lighting there. You can, there's three levels of brightness. And then the function keys, yeah, on the F6, you've got a good, like, snipping tool, which is good for taking screenshots. And uh, the F5, switching between the various power options. Uh, multimedia controls here. And, of course, you've got volume up to microphone and access to the uh, Army Crate software with this button. And uh, up the top, there is some air intake ventilation. So the keys are backlit white only, but you have three levels of brightness. So on the left hand side, we have the power connector, Ethernet jack, HDMI 2.0B, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A port, um, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C with DisplayPort 1.4 and power delivery. And on the right hand side, we have two USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports, making three in total, an air vent for, this, uh, for the GPU and the Kensington lock. So the speakers are okay, about 70 decibels, and the, you know, because the fan noise isn't too loud, it's perfectly fine. And its weight, Four pounds eight ounces, and with the power brick, five pounds ten ounces. So, how would I sum up the ASUS Zephyrus G15? Well, I was really pleased that finally we have a decent screen for an AMD laptop. The build quality is okay, and the fit and finish is fine. The aluminium lid does give it a somewhat premium feel, and it is only two centimeters thick, so it does feel pretty sleek. Fan noise is a bit of a mixed bag mainly because as soon as you start doing stuff, it starts to ramp up and it gets quite loud. And I do feel that this, the culprit here is the really poor airflow the system has. What on earth were ASUS thinking by blocking off those fan air intakes? If I wasn't looking to sell this laptop, I would rip those straight off. I was a little bit disappointed that the CPU performance was below a regular 4800H, but that is to be expected. As for the GPU, if ASUS does plan to put a higher powered one in here, they need to address that cooling first. Battery life is okay, you know, expect around about five hours. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on the other videos on this laptop and various comparisons I have planned. Bye.